Hello guys, welcome back to Hot News Studio and welcome back to our segment Science and Technology. Today we are going to discuss about the new research in which scientists found strange matter in the nuclei of the atom. So without wasting any time, let's start the video. A new physics result two decades in making has found surprisingly complex path for the production of strange matter within the atom. Strange matter is um, any matter containing a subatomic particle known as a strange quark. Strange here refers in part to a profound remoteness from our everyday life. Strange matter only seems to show up in truly extreme circumstances such as high energy particle collisions and perhaps enormously dense and pressurized cores of neutron stars. Probing the detail of the strange matter's emergence is a part of the broader effort by nuclear physicists to understand the fundamentals of how subatomic particles form. In this particular case, a group of researchers found focus on one variety of the strange matter called lambda particles. This data is the first time we study the lambda in the atomic nucleus and we look at what we call hadronization, the process of producing hadrons, says study co-author Kavatar Hafidi. Associate Laboratory Director for the Physical Sciences and Engineering at Argonne National Laboratory. Hadrons are subatomic particles that are made of quarks and subject to the strong force. This is the force that binds the quarks together to make larger particles such as protons and neutrons and that holds those protons and neutrons within an atom nucleus. Lambda particles are baryons, which means they are type of hadrons made up of three quarks. One up quark, one down quark, and one strange quark. The vast majority of quark are up or down varieties, says Lima L. Pesci, lead author of the new study, and an associate professor of the experimental nuclear physicist at Mississippi State University. Strange quarks are heavier, rarer babies than their up and down siblings, and the particles they form are correspondingly far less stable, tending to decay very quickly. The scarce, slippery nature of the strange quark is precisely what makes them so appealing for researchers, says Daniel Bredenberg, an assistant professor of physics at the Ohio State University, who was not involved in the new work. A naive picture of a proton and the neutron is that they involve up and down quarks, he says. So part of the reason that strange quarks are interesting is because, at least in this naive picture, they are not there at the beginning. You have to create them somehow. Lambda particles have been studied before, but in the new paper, the researchers relied on a special process called semi-inclusive deep inelastic scattering to create them inside a nucleus. This involves shooting an electron beam at the nucleus, which transfers energy to the quarks within the protons and neutrons inside, stimulating the lambda production. Yet, despite this elaborate effort, the arcane laws of quantum mechanics dictate that even here the electron do not interact directly with the quark. Instead, the impinging electron release virtual photons, so called because they scarcely exist at all. These photons are reabsorbed by the quarks almost as fast as they are emitted. The resulting energy kick can send quarks pinballing through the nucleus where they combine with the other quarks to create lambdas and other composite particles. This subatomic alchemy took place at the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator facility way back in 2004. At this time, Elpisi was conducting separate research with the data to set. But she eventually chose to seek evidence of the lambda particle within it as well, teasing out the subtle signal of lambda decay. The particles are too short-lived for direct, direct direction, required more than 10 years of effort. It is a long journey, Elpisi says, she and her colleagues reported their finding in the journal Physical Review Letter. By studying the energy and the momentum of the particle produced by the decaying lambdas, Ilfesi and her colleagues put piece together exactly what happened to the freed quark running rampant through the nucleus. Interaction with other subatomic particles sap the quark energy to varying degrees and they experienced changes in the momentum as they linked up with the other quarks to form hadrons. 
more strikingly, the researchers saw differences between the production of lambda particles with high and low energies that suggest these particles sometimes form in an unexpected way. Instead of a virtual photon hitting one quark and freeing it to go find two, uh, new, two new quarks to bond with as the theorists have long assumed, the virtual photon sometimes seem to interact with the quark pair known as a diquark. Likely composed of the modern up and down quarks that are so plentiful in the nucleus. This diquark would then go in search of a third quark, ultimately bonding with a strange quark. When this happened, the result is a lambda particle. The finding not only reveals how these strange and unusual particles form, Bredenberg says, because the particles' final energies and momentum contain information about what they encounter on their first journey to the nucleus, they can also help uncover what's happening in the hidden heart of the atom. Not all physicists are convinced that this diquark hypothesis reflects how lambdas really form. However, there are alternative models that could explain the energy and momentum patterns the researcher absorbs, says Jen Ching-Ping, a professor of nuclear physics at the Universities of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, who was not involved in the new study. For example, he says pattern of momentum transfers between the particles that researchers attribute to die quarks dynamic could instead be result of a single quark picking up two quarks separately. That would mean the originally quark by quark conception of how tripartite particles such as lambdas form is correct. Their data is interesting, but the interpretation, I think, is a very long shot, Bank says. Better measurements will likely settle the debate in the near future. The electron beam at the Jefferson Lab is twice as powerful today as it was in 2004, LPC says. And new hadronization experiments are planned for the next year. The electron ion collider, a particle accelerator now being planned at Brookhaven National Laboratory, will also be a powerful new tool for similar experiments, Bredenberg says. Because we are still building it, he says, we can really fine tune it for the measurement we know are important. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, do like, share, and subscribe. We will meet you again in the next video. Till then, goodbye.